Hey, what's up guys? John here. Rents in Austin, Texas are going to drop between 50 to 75% over the next 12 to 18 months. New data suggests that Austin home prices are slowly dropping after the record highs we saw just last year. We're going to see property values fall dramatically. I'm talking Las Vegas and Miami 2008, 2009, 2010 great financial crisis levels where values drop 50, 60, 70% overnight. Well, we are going to see the same thing happen in Austin, and I'm going to show you some real hard facts to show you exactly what's going to happen, exactly what the future is going to look like in this housing market. And unfortunately, what's happening in Austin is happening in many other markets in America, but nobody is connecting the dots. Nobody is looking clearly what's going on. The media is lying to us saying we're in this great housing shortage and that real estate values will never come down. All these celebrities are coming out saying this is a great time to lock in a mortgage rate and refinance later. And you know, you'll be able to build out all this newfound equity when the housing market booms again. Look at this information. I have a feeling it's going to change the way you look at real estate. It's going to change the way you look at America and how we all invest and how we live. This is gonna change everything. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube will share this content, to educate other people about what's really going on. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. One late payment will send your credit report for a whopping seven years from the date in which it was filed. You can drop your credit score a whopping 180 points, preventing you from getting access to financing and being able to invest in what I think is gonna be the greatest real estate investing opportunity ever. So go to greatcreditfast.com by clicking the link below. Take a look at this. 964,000 residents in Austin. 964,000, right? Pretty small. 54%, 55%. Of Austin, the renters, 223,000 people, right? Well, 120,000 housing units are being built right now for rent in Austin. So put that into context. You have 223,000 renters, 223,000 renters building 120,000 apartments. What does this mean? This means that rental inventory in Austin is going to increase by damn near 54%. 54%. So many people are saying, oh, rents in Austin are not going to go down. What's going to happen when you add 54% rental inventory into a market, right? What's going to happen? You're going to start seeing a lot more competition and competition, supply and demand dictate value. We're going to start seeing rents fall. We're already starting to see that happen right now. 6.4% year over year rents have already fallen, right? This has not taken into consideration the 120,000 units. So when we look at what investors are doing, right? Investors, they're buying deals at a 4.3% cap rate on average in Austin, meaning if they paid all cash for the building, they'd receive 4.3% back, right? Well, most investors, they're putting 30% down, 40% down. They're financing the rest. Well, what happens when you're buying a deal at a 4.3% cap rate and in the first year, rents drop 6.4%? and then you're walking into a scenario with 120,000 rentals coming on the market. Well, rents are gonna continue to fall and you're not gonna have the income coming in to service the debt. That's what's gonna happen. And over the last few years, we've seen investors all over America, all over the world coming to Austin to invest, thinking it's gonna be the new Los Angeles. You're gonna to start to see a lot of these investors get completely wrecked. That's what's gonna happen. And we're already starting to see it. Like, look at what's happened just in Austin for context. People don't think rents can drop 50%, 75%. Rents have increased 86% between August 21 and August 22, 86%. That is unreal, it's unsustainable. We're gonna start to see these rents fall off a cliff, fall off a cliff. There's no doubt about it. You're already starting to see employers starting to try to leave Austin, get out of there. Austin, so Texas cities are booming, but their offices are most vacant. Their offices are vacant, they're most vacant in Austin, right, and, and in Texas. And you're starting to see this inventory start to, to really stack up. Remember in 2021, 2022, you couldn't buy in Austin. There was no inventory. There was 100 buyers for every house. People were waiving all inspection appraisal contingencies, They're buying sight unseen, buying over a Zoom call. They were desperate to get in there. Now what's happening? We're walking into a situation where borrowing costs are through the roof. Borrowing costs are through the roof. Jobs are starting to fade away in Austin. Opportunities starting to fade away. And people are looking at these homes no longer as an asset, but instead as a liability because they might not be able to rent their homes. They don't have the equity in most cases to sell. And the reason I say that is because the average down payment for a first time buyer, which many of these buyers are because they were you know, renting three grand, four grand, five grand in these expensive other cities. They were coming over saying, hey, I can be a property owner for the same price. And I own this property. I'm building equity. I have tax benefits. It's a win-win. This is what I'm going to do. Well, now if they were to sell that property, 
for the price in which they paid. And they're, you know, they're selling it to a buyer with perfect credit, which is you know, roughly 8%. That buyer would have to commit to making a payment of over $5,000 per month with the same situation with 6% down. $5,000 a month. Who would do that when you could rent in Austin for $1,700? That's the average in Austin. Not many people would want to do it. A yard's not worth four grand a month for most people. So an extra four grand a month. So what's going to happen? These, these property owners think, I'm just going to Airbnb it. I'm going to figure out a different situation. There's 10,944 vacation rentals in Austin. Airbnb might not be the option because as all this supply picks up, the economy starts to contract. What's going to happen? People are going to be traveling less. There's going to be less people that are fighting for these units, rents are going to continue to soften. And so when you have this situation unfolding like we do now, you're going to start to see more and more and more uh, situations where people can't refinance their properties. They're going to start giving the keys back to the bank. Uh, they're, they're going to walk into more like, you know, story build situations. Like story build is a real estate developer. They have $2 billion in assets in mainly Austin and in Texas. And these properties, they were hoping that rents are going to continue to capitalize and continue to appreciate at the rate in which they have so they can capitalize on this current market. But that's not happening. A lot of these properties are now not built. They're just sitting. They're sitting vacant and they're desperately looking for a buyer because banks won't refinance them. They can't get any loans because of what's going on in the market. They're starting to see right now the tightening in commercial real estate lending standards going towards 2008 and 2000, 2010 levels implies a more challenging environment for property owners to borrow or refinance debt. Now I saw a podcast from a multi-billionaire named David Sachs owns a $15 million property in San Francisco and he has a $9 million loan on it. The bank said, we'll only give you 2.4 million on this deal, 2.4 million on a $15 million asset and you have to personally guarantee the loan. So if that's happening for a multi-billionaire who probably has tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars with that bank, he can't get a loan. It's 80% loan to value or 70% loan to value or 65% loan to value. What does it mean for the everyday American? Right? What does it mean for the everyday investor that bought a deal? It means that they're going to walk into big problems. And what a lot of people don't realize about commercial real estate versus residential, residential is a one to four unit property. When you sign on the dotted line on those loan documents, you're personally guaranteeing it. And so you're, you're buying it, you're personally guaranteeing it, your credit score is at risk. All of these things are associated directly with you. It's a personal responsibility. When you're buying a commercial property, five units, 10 units, 50 units, 100 units, the asset is the guarantor of the loan. The lender is looking at the asset asking, okay, how much money is this asset bringing in? How much you know, debt can this property support? What are we comfortable lending on? You know, who's the manager? Who's running the deal? Like They're going to look at all these different scenarios. But when rents are starting to soften, they're investing in a dying business. And because of that, they're going to be really, really careful on who they're going to lend money to and what they're going to lend on. And so when you have rents falling dramatically, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to get access to financing. And because of that, a lot of these banks are going to start taking back these deals. And so when you have a situation like what we're walking into now, the only, only the strong are going to be able to survive. Only the ones that have all cash or very, very, very high positions of equity in their properties are going to be able to hold on and say, yeah, I'll drop rents 50%, 60%, 70%. Now, a lot of people are probably are saying, this is a great thing. Rents are going to come down. This is going to be an awesome, awesome situation because the cost of living is so expensive. And I agree, the cost of living, living is extremely expensive. But there's one thing that people generally forget about this. When rents plummet and the mom and pop and the everyday American is you know, the, the number one loser in this situation, who wins? Right? Who is the beneficiary of these properties? My belief it's large corporations, institutional investors. They're going to step in there and quote unquote save the day and buy these properties. Since when has a large institutional investor or any large corporation made things better for the American people? Never. You go advertise online, you go advertise anywhere. It's, a, it's really, really, really expensive. Their cost basis to get that product and service in front of a customer is almost zero, but yet it costs an arm or leg to advertise. Well, why is that? It's because they have market share. You have no other option. The same will be true if there's only 15 or 20 very large institutional investors that are essentially controlling the housing market, which that, according to CNBC and MetLife Insurance, that will be the scenario by 2030. 40% of all single family homes they're saying will be owned by institutional investors by then. So when you're looking at this situation that we're looking at right now, where 54% of rental inventory is gonna come to market in Austin, 
and you look at all the home values that people, you know, the, all the price points people paid for these home values, a lot of people are gonna start looking at their neighbor saying, hey, I paid 600,000 for my home. You know, he's listed for 550, what should I do? I, don't, I, I can't sell it. Oh, this person down the street is listed for five and a quarter. This person is for 500. It's going to be a race to the exits. It's going to be like a fire in a movie theater. Two exits, people are going to be rushing towards it. That's what I think could very well happen as this job market continues to deteriorate. Inflation gets much worse. Insurance and taxes continue to rise in Texas. And a lot more stress gets put on this market. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity to invest in real estate. You got to be prepared for it. You have to be really, really prepared for it. You have to know what you're doing. You can't listen to other people and just go completely on what they say. Some realtors say this is an incredible time to invest, or you know, maybe your uncle will say you gotta buy now. Look at the data, look at the facts, look at the everyday consumer, look at the national savings rate, look at where people truly stand from a financial position, and ask yourself, are people gonna be in a better position or a worse position over the next six to 12 months? And if it's gonna be a worse position, you need to put yourself in a much better position so that when people start selling off assets, you can start picking up deals, you can start really investing and using a formula like Blackstone, what they used when they founded Invitation Homes, they had this one formula, it was called, they were called the dollar more guys. And what they would do is they would say, how much is the land worth? How much is the actual land worth? Maybe the land's worth 100,000. They'd say, how much would it cost to build this home brand new with today's construction costs? They might call up a developer in the neighborhood and say, okay, how much would it cost to build this 1,500 square foot, three bed, two bath house? And that, that developer might say 200 bucks a foot. It's like, okay, great. So it costs you about 300 grand to build it plus the cost of the land. That's how much it would cost as a brand new asset. If I wanted to buy it with a 50% discount to replacement value, maybe it's worth 175, maybe it's worth 180,000. And then they would go say, okay, we're gonna go to this auction, we'll pay all cash, and we'll pay that number a dollar more than everybody else, up to that threshold. And there were there was not that many bidders out there looking to go buy properties. They bought 80,000 homes with this strategy primarily. And so if you're an investor, you're looking to invest, just make sure you're buying based on fundamentals, not based on emotion, not based on hype, not based on some false promise of the future invest based on fact. The facts are Austin's in very, very big trouble. Rents are gonna plummet. Property values are gonna fall in a very, very big way. And it's not just Austin. There's gonna, this is gonna be happening to many markets all throughout America. What are your thoughts about this? Drop below, hit the like button. If you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you. At greatcreditfast.com, that's greatcreditfast.com. Again, if you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any problem on your credit board, book a free call below by clicking the link, schedule in with us, and we'd love to uh, talk to you, see how we can help. Catch you guys in the next video.